Hello and welcome to the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Today's video, looking back on Scotland 1 Moldova now. Not a game I don't think anybody will be revisiting in great detail in the years to come, but we'll look back on it for the purpose of this video. Anyway, it is a crucial win if you want to call it that, even if it was one that that was expected. Um, if you want to leave a like on this video, would be much appreciated, and perhaps more importantly, um, subscribe as well. We are pushing towards the 1,000 mark, and the sooner we hit that, the better. So please do subscribe if you haven't already. It would be much appreciated. In terms of Scotland, the Linden Dykes tap in in the 14th minute was all the goal action we've seen at Hamden. Over 40,000 in attendance as restrictions on capacity were lifted for the first time. Do I say post-pandemic, but certainly... Um, since restrictions have started to ease in Scotland and plenty of noise we've made but wasn't a whole lot to shout about so I'm going to be completely honest but a win's a win and that is all that mattered for Scotland great play by Nathan Patterson starting in place of Stephen O'Donnell there were six changes I say starting in place of Stephen O'Donnell no, Stephen O'Donnell didn't play in the Denmark game but he has been uh, Steve Clark's first choice at right back in the last sort of 12 to 18 months Andy Robertson played right wing back there in the Denmark game. Expecting Stephen O'Donnell would probably come back in, but Nathan Patterson came in and definitely took his chance, winning a loose ball in the middle of the park, driving forward, setting up Kevin Nisbet. And his shot was saved. Patterson got something as well. Bit of a mess in the box before Lyndon Dykes was at the back post to tap in from all three yards. Don't think he'd scored in 11 previous international games. I mean, it's quite mad that I think... It was only last year Lyndon Dykes made this debut. That was already his 17th cap. If that just highlights the amount of Scotland games that have been on in the last year. But, yeah, they got through in the end, Scotland, and got the 1-0 win. -win. Moldova never threatened. Craig Gordon could, was, could have had a deck chair out, I think, for parts of that game. Wasn't tested at all, so it wasn't like Scotland were going to lose the game at any stage. But Moldova were a really poor strike. They were not great. I think they're between 170th and 180th in the world, and that definitely showed they had zero quality going forward, um, which sounds a bit harsh, but yeah, compared to Scotland, they were inferior, I think it would be fair to say, but Scotland did not blow them away by any matter of means, and you think if it was a Denmark again, who only got a 1-0 win over Faroe Islands, although they did make lots of changes, you'd expect that game would be 4 or 5 nothing. they only won 1-0 through a late goal, and Israel with the shock of the night, really a 5 2 victory against Austria, which perhaps shows that point that Scotland got away to Israel, the one that was lamented earlier this year. Perhaps it, it could be well, in hindsight, it might not be viewed as a good point, but it doesn't look too bad on the face of it, seen as Austria have went there and lost by a pretty heavy margin. But yeah, a decent result, I think, for Scotland against Moldova in three points, if nothing else. So yeah, it sets up for a massive game against Austria on Tuesday in Vienna. Winning that takes Scotland to second in the Group F World Cup 22 qualification section. And Israel can't occupy that spot. So it is a wide open group. It has a completely different dynamic to the group. I think the conversation had sort of centred around it was either going to be Austria or Scotland. In those sort of playoffs, but I think Denmark are too far away now for anybody in the group to catch. But Austria and Scotland are the two teams talked about for the same spot, and I think Israel have put themselves right in the mix for it. Especially if they get something out of their next game, I think it's against Denmark they're playing, and if they get something against Scotland next month, uh, yeah, that it could be Israel, could be the same spot. So I think it's now a three way race for that. I think people need to include Israel in that chat, which hasn't been happening previously. but I think Austria, probably when you boil it down, are just about the, the favourites for the second spot. So Scotland need to win in Vienna if they are to have any chance of going through to the World Cup playoffs, at least. So one to keep an eye on um, outside of Vienna on Tuesday. But in terms of the scotland Moldova game, it was really poor. Um, the first half was decent. Scotland created lots and lots of chances. Kieran Tierney should have put one in the net, Andy Robertson should have put one in the net as well. Kevin Nisbet had a chance, so it wasn't like Scotland weren't creating chances. But the second half, it was sort of maybe the opening 25 minutes were good from Scotland, but then after that, it was just so slow. Um, long balls up the park, 
wasn't a lot of fluidity to Billy Elmore doing his best to get the ball on the deck. He had a great chance in the second half and should have made it 2 0. Great link up play between him and Kevin Nisbet, but again, he should have buried his chance. And apart from that, it was quite slow. There wasn't a great deal of clear cut chances. Moldova, I mean, I don't know, in the last 10 minutes, Scotland seemed to set off the game and just settle for 1 0. And when you see what Israel did to Austria and they just went for it, they could have sat at 2 or 3 0. They were 3 0 at one point. They could have just sat on that. They just continued to go and go and try and get more goals. And if Scotland were ever going to try and do that, it began to do it was it was against Moldova. Scotland have only scored more than two goals in competitive matches on their street part. Those were against San Marino and Kazakhstan at Hamden. Which tells you all you need to know we're not exactly an attacking team on their street part. So but he did make a good point and it was in the post-match pressures and stuff, he was asked where were Scotland clinical enough. He said we took the one chance and we won one nil. We were clinical enough on the night, which I fear enough assessment on the night. I think, um, but I think there'll be an awareness that in future matches against the likes of Austria and Denmark, even Israel, who are in and around Scotland's level at the moment, then more chances are going to have to be taken. Otherwise, that game last night, like I think if we play Austria playing like that, we did in the second half, or we even play Israel like we did in the second half, then that could be a defeat or at the very least a draw. So there is plenty of work to do. Um, there's still a bit of a... It's raised the mood slightly, but there's also an understanding that it was Moldova. Scotland should be winning that game and anything other than a win would be, um, let's just say, there wouldn't be a great reaction. Probably if you were given a school mark, I think you'd give Scotland a C for the game against Moldova. They passed. You know, I just get through the test all right, but it wasn't exactly with flying colours. There were still very obvious problems, I think, for Scotland. The main one is taking chances. I think they did, I think they did in the group stages, I think there was a, a stat in commentary last night that Scotland had between 40 and 50 shots on target during the Euros, but or 50, 40 and 50 shots on goal, at least, during the Euros, but only scored the one goal. And it wasn't like it was a well-worked piece of play. It was a really great goal from Callum McGregor from outside the box. So there was a real problem with Scotland and perhaps not creating, creating chances were fine, it's taking them. It seems to be the issue. But it does set up a huge match with Austria. I don't think a draw is good enough, to be honest. A low actual result, a draw, might not be the worst thing in the world in different circumstances. I think a win is needed here because any more drop points in this group. As I said in the last one, I think it's going to need five victories. Moldova was the first, and now they need to go to Austria and win. It's as simple as that. But I think we'll leave it there. It's a bit short. I'm not a great lot to talk about. It's a bit victory against Moldova, an unexpected one, so we've not a whole lot to recap on it. I um, thought Billy Elmore was really good again. Um, yeah, two first staff to hand in a competitive fixture. Man in the match. What, what else can you see? Uh, Nathan Parson was really good, I think. Stephen O'Donnell's got a bit of a job in his hands to try and get that right-back spot off him. I thought he was really good to pack him down the right and adds a bit of an extra threat for Scotland. Uh, John McGinn did well under the circumstances. He's only come out of COVID isolation, I think, after the Denmark game. So to get through, I think, 65 minutes. Decent from him. And the only way concern as well is Andy Robertson limped off with an ankle injury. Those who aren't aware, he had ankle ligament damage. Uh, Liverpool last month was expected to probably be out for these international games but came back in pretty quick time to, to make these qualifiers played 90 minutes in the Denmark game but it was a planned substitution around the 70th minute mark against Moldova and there's hopes they'll be fit uh, for Wednesday's game and if you're a Liverpool fan watching this that's probably not a bit of great news if you prefer your club form over your international um, because it's, it's a pretty testing schedule when you think he's only back from injury less than a couple of weeks so yeah plenty to ponder ahead of Tuesday's game we'll do the reaction to that game on the night um, so do subscribe if you're keen on that and then we'll be back to the Premiership action from next week but that's all we have time for this if you haven't already please do subscribe it would be much appreciated and until uh, next time take it easy